So that matches exactly the angle that we would expect if these dunes were deposited under water. Well, here we are at Zion National Park and it's the famous checkerboard mesa behind me. And it's got this um, erosion patterns with the vertical lines and then it's got the Z-shaped patterns from cross beds. Now these cross beds tell an interesting tale and they have a really big importance for how we interpret not just this little rock layer here in Utah, but how we think about the whole world and even how we think about the Bible. And that's why I get so excited about these cross beds. So here at Checkerboard Mesa, we see basically these are truncated or chopped off sand dunes, sand dunes. The way sand dunes happen, either in a desert or underwater, same basic principle, there's a flow direction to the fluid, whether it's air or water. And the sand dune forms as, as uh, sand grains come up the slow bank, uh, the, the shallow bank, and they fall off the, um, the leading edge. And so the dune forms forward, or I guess in the direction of the flow, okay? And so you have one dune forming and it, it actually gets deposited horizontally as it's traveling in one direction. Um, and, and then another sand dune comes along on top of those, chews off the top of the ones that were just deposited and deposits another set of sand dunes right on top of the truncated set behind, behind them. Now, the reason we know all this is because of flume studies. And a flume is like, imagine a lazy river at a water park, except this one is, uh, has tracked water flow and uh, uh, sedimentologists put different grains of sand and, and sediment types and, and watch what it does. And what they see is this behavior that I'm describing to you. And it's underwater sand uh, dunes. So here's the thing. The park signage says that these were formed in an ancient desert. Now, if that's true, then the, the, the water deposited rock layers beneath and the water deposited rock layers above must have been deposited in eras, ancient long time spans, so that it could turn from ocean all the way to desert and then back into an ancient ocean. And you need a lot of time for that. Well, the, the flood model, based on the Bible, the flood model would, would say that all these layers were stacked one on top of the other rapidly within the flood year. Now, is there a feature in these dunes and in the angle of these dune deposits called cross beds because they, the angle of the sand deposition crosses at an angle to the horizontal, okay? And we see that right here. Uh, is there a feature? Answer is yes. And it turns out that um, under air, it's about 32 degrees. So the, so the sand grains fall at a steeper angle, about 32 degrees on average, depending on flow rate, and sand grain size and different factors like that. But uh, when it's deposited underwater, it's closer to 20 degrees. So it's a shallower angle when it gets deposited underwater. And geologists have finally done the hard work of measuring the angles of these sand dunes, uh, these ancient sand dunes, and they're, they're from 17 to 21 degrees, uh, roughly. So that matches exactly the angle that we would expect if these dunes were deposited under water. Now, if that's the case, and it seems to be the case, that these are underwater sea floors, so to speak, like imagine a giant sea that's moving across the continent, um, deposited there, how much water would that require to make sand dunes this size? Because again, from flume studies, we know that the bigger the dune, the deeper the water column must have been. And right here at Zion, the water must have been 500 feet at least above our heads and above the tops of these sand dunes in order to have enough force to deposit these underwater sand dunes. This reminds us here of a colossal, unimaginably immense 
um, volume of water moving at speed across the continent. We think it was moving right here in the western United States during the flood of Noah about 4,400 years ago. And that means the Bible got it right all along. Mm -hmm.